A clown? Oh, well, I guess what's the big deal, huh? It's just one. Remember the old visual gag of a small army of clowns cramming into a tiny car? Since the premiere of this trick in the 1950s, scientists from around the world have been trying to empirically answer the question, how many clowns can you fit in a car? Earlier this year, Jack Napier, professor in the Department of Physics at the University of Toronto, published a paper in the Journal of Human Biomechanics compiling the results of roughly 70 years of research, all aimed at answering the clown question. Research on this topic began when Ronald McDonald, McDonald's famous fast food restaurant mascot, was introduced in 1963, causing clown hype to peak. At that point, studies focused on the outfits and accessories clowns wore and how these articles limited space inside of cars. Interest in the topic dwindled as the popularity of clowns fizzled until 1990, which marked the release of Stephen King's It. This miniseries brought the issue to the forefront once again. With the rise of early 90s commercialism, research began taking into consideration the equipment and materials required for a clown show while packing the entertainers into a car. This question was forgotten yet again until 2017, when King's miniseries was adapted into film. That's when Napier and his team started his literature review. I had the opportunity to speak to Napier recently, and this is what he said. Other researchers have tried to piece together the puzzle, but with this meta-analysis, you have used the pieces to create a full picture. With all the clown hysteria and fear the public has expressed in the past few years, we feel this question is more relevant than ever. Within this study, Napier found that, on average, clowns take up about 12% more unusable headspace near the top of the cabin than normal human adults due to their enormous colorful wigs and red foam ball noses. In terms of how much seating area each piece of equipment and comedic clothing occupies, the results are as follows. Oversized footwear occupies 1% of sitting room. Hoop pants occupy 2% of sitting room. Fanny packs and pockets full of novelty items occupy 2% of sitting room. Equipment for a standard clown gig, including face paint, balloons, and magic, occupy 2.25% of sitting room and trunk space. In total, you can actually fit 7.25% less clowns in a standard size vehicle compared to normal sized non-clown people. Realistically, that's almost one less clown you can fit in a car than normal people. This only applies for clowns going to or leaving a performance. When you try to fit clowns in a car without their gear and outfits, you can fit exactly the same number of clowns in a car as non-clowns. For this piece, I also had the chance to speak to Pagliacci the Clown, a prominent entertainer in the northern Italian clown community. He said, This research paper has been a career saver. Before, children were scared of us and our booking suffered. But now that this information is out there, people are more inclined to see us as people as opposed to overzealous, cosmetically challenged freaks. Whoa! While writing this video, I contacted Stephen King, the author of it, to get his response on the subject. Unfortunately, his publicity team got back to me and refused to comment on the development. April Fools! None of this happened, I was just kidding, it was just a joke. However, I like the idea of this being a real thing. So if there's an academic out there who's watching this video, I would love to see this study legitimately done. Anyway, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel, and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.